Thank you very much indeed, Gary. And thank you so much for inviting me back again to Working Digital. So Gary has asked me to talk about the growth of our business and our digital journey specifically since the last time I spoke at Working Digital in 2013. The process of putting together the slides um, has actually been a really interesting experience for me. If you're anything like me as a small business owner, I spend most of my time immersed in operational troubleshooting, a lot of it looking at spreadsheets and um, probably not as much as I would like planning for the future, but very little time looking back at our successes or um, kind of rounding up um, what we've been up to over the past few years. I spend plenty of time ruminating over the things that don't work or the failures. So having the opportunity to actually look at the good things is a really nice thing to do for change, particularly in light of the, um, the havoc that has been wreaked in our business recently by the terrible weather. Um, and of course, culminating with the beast from the east. More on that later. So if you've never heard of Three Sisters Bake, we are a cafe, catering and wedding business based just outside Glasgow. We started our first cafe in 2011 in a little place called Quarrier Village, which is in Inverclyde in between Bridge of Weir and Kilbacombe. We had a workforce of three people, which were ourselves, um, no additional employees. The most common question I get asked is, are we really sisters? Or is it an elaborate marketing ploy? And the answer is we are really sisters. Um, my middle sister, Nicola, is our start, where we started in 2011. She was our baker. My youngest sister, Lindsay, was our chef. And I was our front of house manager, waitress, and barista. Quickly became apparent that that was not a very practical way to run a business. Um, so very quickly, we wrapped up to having a workforce of 12 employees. So by the time I spoke at this event in 2013, that's the position we were at. We had our one cafe and we had 12 employees. So we're very definitely still a small business. So since 2013, we have gone from being that small business with one unit and 12 employees to a business which now employs nearly 50 people across two cafe businesses, an events business, a wedding venue, um, a wedding cake business um, and the quick answer is that social media has played an enormous role in that growth. So 2014 was a crazy year for us. We published a cookbook, bought a food truck and started an events business, took part in the 2014 Commonwealth Games, not as competitors, we had our food truck there. Um, we opened a summer pop-up at Finlayston Estate in Inverclyde. I had my second baby and we opened our second cafe premises in a place called Colerne, which is thank you, um, just north of Bear Animal Guy. That also incorporates a wedding venue space. So it's fair to say that we very we all very nearly had a nervous breakdown by the end of 2014. Um, so since then, we have camped down on the expansion and focused on the rather more boring process of consolidation, um, a process which has taken us probably three years and counting to undertake. Between myself and Nicola, my middle sister, we also now have five kids, which has definitely put the reins on the growth somewhat by probably adjusting our life work balance focus to uh, a more reasonable level. Um, so if that was a quick summary of our real world growth, our social media growth or digital growth probably mimics that quite accurately. I've actually pulled the slides from my presentation from Working Digital in 2013, which shows what our Facebook page looked like then. Um, and according to this, we had 3,985 followers. So this has now gone up to 18,621. Um, from memory, as the Facebook analytics don't let me go back this far, the hugest spike in that growth um, was in 2014, which reflects the spike in business growth. 
that I described. In terms of other social media, um, I don't think we even really had a presence on Instagram in 2013, which has probably been the biggest shift for us as we really started to focus on this as a platform. And we now have um, 13,400 followers on there. Our Twitter following has also increased by a couple of thousand followers, um, but I'll return to this later in my presentation. So anyway, the point of social media is not simply to collect followers. What advantage has placing such emphasis on social media over the years had on our business? Quite simply, I have doubts that our business would still exist if it wasn't for social media. It certainly wouldn't exist at the size it is now. We were very lucky at the time we started our business that Facebook was a much less busy place. I don't think the algorithm existed. So generally when you posted something, your likers and followers saw it without having to pay for the privilege. And even saying that aloud makes me want to cry for those simpler times. <laughs> um, for us, certainly, it transformed our business from being a place which might have attracted people from a few surrounding villages into a place where people day trip to from much further afield. We know from asking customers via face uh, feedback cards that people drive from all over to visit our cafes, particularly the weekends. It's common for us to receive visitors from the other side of Glasgow, from across Ayrshire, Stirlingshire, Perthshire, and even from other countries. We had visitors one day from Perth, Australia, who found us through Facebook at our Corners Cafe. Without the power of social media spreading the word, it's highly unlikely that we would have benefited from this type of domestic tourism, if you like. So if you look at the current spread of our Facebook followers, um, and if you want to do this on your own Facebook page, it's a really interesting little thing to do. Um, you just click the Insights tab at the top and then the People tab down the left hand side. So that tells you basically whereabouts um, in the world your Facebook followers come from. So you can see from ours that um, the majority come from, well, not, not quite in the United Kingdom, when you break it down into cities and places, the majority come from Glasgow with 4,171. Um, we've got 1,274 who live in Paisley, and these are just the people who've actually registered where they live on Facebook. Uh, without having a following in these bigger populations um, through social media, we would never have had a big enough customer base to stay in business from the local areas alone. So I get asked by a lot of other small business owners like yourselves how we have generated so many followers on social media. My career background before opening the cafes was in marketing, which has probably helped somewhat. Although when I worked in marketing and PR in the mid 2000s, social media marketing didn't really exist. Or if it did, it was on Bebo, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> um, so the simple answer is that I absolutely love social media marketing. So I've spent a lot of time trying to learn about it and to understand how to do it well, um, which has really just been a process of experimentation um, over the years, seeing what the algorithm likes and learning what our followers like. Um, as a small business owner, I wear many hats, as we all do. Uh, many of them are really boring or totally unpleasant, like dealing with bins. Uh, but social media and marketing is like my happy escape place. Um, I almost feel like I'm playing Russian roulette with the algorithm when I post on Facebook. I'm trying to beat the system with the aim being to get a large organic reach without having to pay for it. Actually, before I go on, does everybody know what algorithm means? Um, if anybody doesn't, set your hand up. Good. Because uh, I was about to hand it over to you guys to explain. <laughs> <laughs> so having said that, <laughs> um, I may be a social media geek, but I'm definitely not a tech geek in any shape or form. I'm not an early adopter. I didn't use social media actively before starting to use it for business. So if any of you don't really feel like you know all that much about it at the moment, um, that should not be prohibitive to getting started or to building your fan base. 
I still have no idea what Snapchat is, and until it starts being widely used by over 25s, I probably won't bother as that is not our target market. <laughs> so don't stress out thinking you have to learn everything about every single social media channel all at once. I'd say it's okay to choose one and start small. So if you're not like me and you don't share an interest in marketing or you don't enjoy spending time on social media, it may be worth considering outsourcing if you feel social media could be truly valuable to your business. And there's definitely some businesses where social media arguably is not something that is worth spending time doing. Certainly for us it is. One thing I realized though over the years that is if, if there are aspects of business that I really don't like or I'm rubbish at, which there are many, it is probably worth paying to outsource them or um, employing someone to do it in-house if you can afford to do this. There doesn't necessarily need to be an employee who's dedicated only to social media, which could be a very expensive undertaking. But if you are at the stage of considering taking on your first or an additional office team member, consider adding social media management to the job description to attract applications from people who have a background or interest in this. So it became increasingly obvious as our business and social media both continued to grow that we needed to systematise our approach to social media and create more of a strategy. For example, anyone who keenly follows us on Facebook might be forgiven for thinking the business was about to shut down during the winter of 2014 as we were so quiet on social media. This was in fact because I was on maternity leave um, with my second son Harrison and because we had no social media systems in place to keep this function going in my four month absence, our Facebook and Instagram pages just ground to a halt. It also became obvious that even when I'm not on maternity leave, which I have been again since that episode with my third child Finlay last year, I just don't have the time I used to, to devote to social media content creation. So the solutions that we now have in place have evolved over the years, but are systematized to a point which essentially cuts me out of the process if I'm too busy or if I go off to have any more babies, which after three, I'm definitely not planning to. <laughs> Content for Instagram and Facebook are done by our in-house marketing assistant, Lucy, who started with us during her graphic design degree as a waitress. She started, um, doing marketing for us one day per week while waitressing, which as a relatively small business was still really affordable for us. And gradually as the business has grown, she has grown her marketing role with us as well. So Lucy and I came up with a rotation of images that we wanted to be featured on our social media to ensure there was a good mix um, each week to represent our full spectrum of product offering. So we post twice a day, Monday to Friday, once a day on a Saturday and Sunday. Content, in cover, content covered includes at least one wedding cake post, a day in the life cafe shot, one post um, with an image of our cake cabinet at either cafe. We try to repost a customer image, one savoury food post, one post about our current seasonal heroes, which are our range of dishes made with seasonal ingredients, a funny, usually food related quote, a wedding venue post, and usually a couple of sales posts promoting whatever event we have running at the time. At the moment, it's Easter events at both of our cafes. So we don't really base this on the popularity of posts, as if we did, all we would ever post would be photos of cakes. <laughs> our social media followers are cake lovers, no doubt about it. However, it's important to us to convey that we are more than just a cake shop and that our cafe food is all prepared on site from scratch. Scheduling has been a total game changer for us, both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Facebook scheduling is an amazing tool which can be accessed via the phone app as well as the desktop. Scheduling changed social media for us from being a task which seemed to take over endless amounts of time each week to a task which now can be done in two to three hours per week. We also discovered a desktop scheduling app for Instagram in 2016 called Schedugram, which is, looks like this, um, which means that we can schedule Instagram posts at the same time as Facebook. 
uh, making the process even more efficient. So we were probably quite late to the game with this, um, as I previously preferred our social media content to be more spontaneous. Um, but I'm a big believer in the phrase, perfect is the enemy of done. And in the name of being able to systematize and plan our content in advance, scheduling has allowed us to improve the consistency and the quantity of our content, albeit perhaps at the expense of um, spontaneity. This means we post way less about things which are really current or the weather, for example. Um, and we have to be careful about scheduling photos of lovely sunny days as invariably it will be raining on the day that that schedule is the, the, the post is scheduled. I do still try to remember to do uh, more spontaneous posts when I see a good opportunity. For example, yesterday, which was a lovely day, I was walking from the cycle track, which is just above our cafe at Warriors, uh, down to the cafe with my sister Nicola. Um, while we were walking, I filmed a time lapse video during the walk, um, which is something if you've got an iPhone, it's really easy to do and basically um, speeds up the video and um, posted that straight away to social media to demonstrate it's a beautiful day, perfect day for a walk at Quarry Village of Learn, come out, have a coffee. So put that on straight away rather than scheduling it because that post would be totally lost if I put it on in a week and it was raining. So another significant thing um, has been deciding what time to post. Um, until recently, we did this totally non-scientifically. I sort of put my finger in the air and said, well, I think people probably uh, look at social media when they're commuting to work in the morning. So therefore, 8 o'clock in the morning would be a good time. Um, this page um, in the Facebook Insights tab, which again is another great page to look at. Um, please. The what? The whale? Well, now I'm learning. The audience is teaching the speaker. The whale. Right, amazing. It's okay, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Right. So according to my whale, which totally, I nearly fell off my chair, 11,000 people apparently um, are online at 10 o'clock at night. So I was really shocked by this. Um, and basically we had to completely change all of our sort of scheduling patterns because it obviously, as you probably all know from Gary's uh, tuition, evening is the time to capture people. So um, yeah, this was a huge, huge lesson to me. So um, keeping an eye on, I think I, I didn't even realize the, the information that was contained behind the scenes in Facebook until maybe the last year and I've started really trying to tap into it. So yes, time to post is, is a really excellent thing to, to keep an eye on. So the point, um, if, if up until this point our social media planning and execution is pretty much done by Lucy, my marketing assistant, the point where I'm still involved is checking or editing the copy uh, making sure the hashtags are all good and there's enough emojis. I'm obsessed with emojis. Um, I spoke a lot during my last presentation at Working Digital about our focus on good writing um, and I actually referenced Innocent as being a huge influence on me as they were one of the first brands to move away from image or photo based marketing towards the written word or story focused marketing. So I don't need to tell you how excited I am to be followed tonight by Helena from Innocent. Um, so yeah, telling our brand story through behind the scenes posts has always been a big part of our social media strategy and this has become more challenging as the business has grown and our jobs have become more strategic, uh, a bit more probably boring uh, and less interesting as social media fodder than when we were ba bakers, chefs and baristas. <laughs> So now that um, I've established that we, we have managed to acquire a relatively large number of social media followers for a small business, what do we then do with these followers? Um, and this is where it's been important to us to have a clear set of social media objectives, um, what 
are we trying to achieve through social media? So our aims, which have kind of evolved over the years, are firstly brand recognition, to spread the words that we are a Glasgow-based cafe business to people who may not have heard of us, and to keep us in the minds of those who have. Secondly, to create goodwill towards Three Sisters Bake the brand. We want to create an online community to reflect the customer experience that we want to, we hope to create in our cafes. Thirdly, and it is in this order, as a sales tool to promote upcoming events or seasonal products that we're selling. And fourth, increasingly Facebook or people are using Facebook as opposed to our website as a place to find information. For example, during the snow days recently, people were using Facebook to check whether we were open or closed as opposed to going to our website for live updates. So I'm going to run through a few good examples of things that have worked for us in the past. Um, things which have beaten the, or the algorithm and achieved good organic reach for non-paid for posts. Um, so number one is our Christmas Advent giveaway. We ran this competition last year, so to Christmas 2017 and the year before in 2016. Every day in December we gave away a prize and asked people to like and share to win. So the idea for the, the Advent giveaway was actually generated by students um, that we worked with through Caledonian University Marketing Department and turned out to be a huge success. Um, it's also a great example of social media directly translating into sales as we saw spikes in online sales of whichever product we were giving away that day. One thing I would sadly say about these types of giveaways is that I don't think um, they are going to be around for much longer. Facebook really does like them as they do circumvent the algorithm and we did notice a few days this year that our reach was really, really low. And I think that was us being punished by Mark Zuckerberg, who kind of noticed what we were up to. Um, and I, I think basically it just means we need to be a bit more creative. We'll still do it next year, but 